Natural vacuum leak detection. Natural vacuum leak detection relies on the expansion of fuel when it's hot and the contraction as the fuel cools. Now if you've ever been outside mowing your yard with a uh, can of, of fuel sitting there and the sun shines on it a bit, it gets real hard and puffs up. If you were to remove the cap and relieve the pressure and close it back up, it would actually pull the sides in as it cools because the contraction would create a slight vacuum. Now Chrysler's natural vacuum is unique. Their natural vacuum leak detection system uses a vacuum sense switch that is mechanical instead of the electronic sensor like GM's fuel tank pressure sensor. What's the difference? Well, with GM we can actually go in and see the values, the pressure rise, the pressure drop, in scan data. With Chrysler, we would only see a switch open or close. In fact, in both cases, since it's engine off, you're going to have to be using a voltmeter to do this. Now, Chrysler's approach also uses mechanical vents that are normally closed, but can be bypassed by an electrical solenoid to give us free flow. So the solenoid gives us free flow. We only have two electrical devices in this unit, a solenoid and a vacuum switch. We've got two mechanical valve switches. We've got a, a pressure relief valve and a vacuum relief valve. Now, Chrysler's sense switch is the only input to the PCM. The switch closes when it senses about one inch of water as a vacuum. It's the only time the PCM knows something has happened is when the switch is closed. Now we'll cover the mechanical vent valves first. Here's our cutaway. We've cut away the top and the bottom so you'll be able to see some things. Now refueling requires an open vent to prevent pressure buildup and we've said that Chrysler's natural vacuum leak detection is a closed vent. Now if it were stayed closed, a pressure buildup would result in the pump nozzle sensing a fuel backup and kicking off because the pressure would have to come back out the filler neck and we wouldn't be able to refuel the, the, the system. Now here's the bottom removed. If you notice you're looking at a very large area of a diaphragm here with a red seal on it. That's the pressure relief valve. The pressure relief valve opens at about one half inch of water which is a very low pressure. The pressure relief allows refueling. As you start refueling the small amount of pressure, just one half inch of water, causes this large diaphragm to open and when you're done it closes back up. The pressure must close and reseal when pressure is under a half inch indicating refueling is done. Now it's worth noting here the PCM played no part in refueling pressure relief. Even though we have a closed system the PCM did nothing to allow us to refuel. The next time the pressure relief valve is, comes into play is after engine shutdown. After shutdown, if the fuel is hot and the PCM tries to establish a normal long driving time with conditions that will ensure it's hot, it will cause a pressure to start building after the engine is shut down and is sitting. Pressure relief will open at about a half inch of water and then it's going to close when the pressure starts dropping below 0.5 inches. After the valve closes, a slight vacuum starts to build as the fuel continues to cool. At this point, nothing electronic has happened. We haven't done anything electronic. The only thing electronic happened is about 8 to 10 minutes after shutdown, the PCM is going to come alive and starts watching the vacuum sense switches. If the vacuum switch sense will close when the vacuum is under 1 to 2 inches, notifying the PCM a vacuum buildup has occurred. This means we have passed a small leak test. It'll close the length of time it stays closed and the criteria we have says we have no small leaks. We don't have to worry about large leaks. Now this is the opposite of all we have done before in EVAP testing. Before we check for a large leak and only when we pass the large leak we check for small leak. In this case, we check for small leak first and only check for the large leak if we fail this test. Now, that natural vacuum will not happen without the pressure relief 
and sealing action of the relief valves. This has to open and close and seal up. Now the vacuum relief valve is on top and you see it's a much smaller one up here. It's going to open around three to six inches of water in a vacuum. The vacuum relief valve keeps vacuum low with a normally closed fan arrangement. So we've kept the pressure from going too high, we've kept vacuum from going too low. But there is a way to get free flow for normal EVAP operation. For normal EVAP operation, the PCM energizes the solenoid by applying 12 volts to pin 3 when the engine is running. This allows free flow and we don't use our vent valves. Now, engine off, the vent is closed with the engine off. So we've sealed the system up and we're going to rely on these valves. The relief valves are going to have to give us pressure and vacuum relief. A small leak test is done after engine shutdown when the fuel develops a natural vacuum over one to two inches of water. A large leak test is done with the engine running and will only run if the PCM did not see the vacuum sense which close during the engine off cycle. Remember, we've got this cycle, 6 to 8, 10, we have varying numbers after shutdown depending on temperature. It's going to go and start watching to see if the switch closes. If the switch closes, we don't do the large to medium leak test. But to do that, if we're going to do the large leak test, the PCM must remove B plus from the solenoid during normal engine operation. This puts the system back in a sealed mode. The PCM then opens the purge solenoid slightly with the natural vacuum leak solenoid closed. This is going to cause vacuum buildup. It will be limited by the vacuum relief vent, but not before the vacuum sense switch closes if everything is working normal. If the vacuum switch sense, if the vacuum sense switch fails to close, a large link leak must be present because a small amount of manifold vacuum applied to this could not reach one to three inches of water. That's a very small vacuum, so we must have a very large leak. Now failure modes are important to understand. We need to stop right here and understand something. This diagram is worth a million words. If either re relief valve fails to seal, the vacuum switch will not close, which will record a failure. How do we test that? Well, remember, we're sealing the canister side of this natural vacuum leak detection system. So go to the canister side, put a hose on there, and see if a small amount of pressure opens. It has to be, if you want to be accurate, you need an inch of a water gauge called a manometer. You need to see it open at about a half inch. You need to see it close under a half inch and then to relieve vacuum at three to six inches. While you're doing that you could check to see if the switch opens and closes when you put a vacuum on there with a key on engine off. You'll see the switch open up if in fact it does open. So you can run your own test. Let's go through it one more time. You apply a vacuum. It should open the switch before the vacuum relief opens. If the vacuum relief opens and the switch doesn't, it's a failure, change the switch. If either one of these vacuum switches fail to open or close properly, it's bad, replace it. This is a high failure item and you should be looking at it. If the vacuum switch, sense switch opens at a higher vacuum than the vacuum relief operating, a failure will be reported and you're going to have a problem because you're never going to be able to pass the leak test. So these are some of the failure modes you look for. Does this mechanism, this unit, assembly, give you vacuum pressure relief? If it does not give you proper pressure relief, you'll have trouble refueling the car. Does it seal back up and does a, can you create a three to six inch vacuum? That will tell you that the vacuum relief is opening. If the vacuum relief valve opens too low, it may overlap the opening of the, of the vacuum sense switch. The third step, does the vacuum sense switch actually open when you get one to two inches of water as a vacuum? So this is going to give you something to go and test by. Uh, this is a high failure item and you should pay close attention.
to this section.